What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman of The Time Teller. Welcome to another unboxing and review. Now guys, we can see this package is from Aviate. Uh, we've actually done an unboxing and review of one of their watches in the recent past. Uh, now guys, I'm going to release this episode during Microbrand Monday. Is Aviate really a microbrand at this point? Uh, a lot of people argue that they're not, but I still think this is kosher enough to qualify as a Microbrand Monday episode, so let's just get into it. It is 1.15 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, guys, let's remove this outer box. People love when I talk about the packaging. This is pretty standard, right? Cardboard outer box. We have some plastic here. And then uh, here we have this material kind of feels uh, like textile, right? Maybe uh, nylon, perhaps canvas. Uh, and then there's kind of this leather uh, panel here that says XV741. So I already have a feeling I kind of know uh, what's in this box, but I guess, you know, we can unclip these buttons and check it out. Whoa, let's zoom in on that. <laughs> All right, guys, so you heard me chuckle a little bit there, and that's because this is a very out there design, okay? This is not at all what I was expecting. Now, when I read XV741 on this box, I kind of had an idea what they would be celebrating, and that would be the Harrier XV741. I mean, AV8 is kind of an aviation type watchmaker. They celebrate all the different aspects in the aviation community. Uh, I think we, re we reviewed a Aviate Flyboy, and that was kind of a modern take on a Flieger watch. And so uh, it only makes sense that when I read XV741, they would be talking about the Harrier. And here on this uh, metal kind of, I guess it's, it's not really a warranty card, it's uh, the limited edition card showing uh, from London to New York. This is in fact celebrating, let me get you in focus here guys, this is celebrating uh, the transatlantic air race from London to New York, won by Tom Leckie Thompson in his Harrier XV741, and I believe that took place in 1969. So this is kind of a 50th anniversary celebration piece, and uh, we can see that Harrier there. You can see XV741, um, limited to 741 pieces. You guys know how I feel about limited editions. I don't think that, uh, any watch or any item at all uh, just being a limited edition I don't think that adds any you know inherent value to that piece but if you're into aviation and you're into this specific type of plane uh, then you know that might be cool and you might want to shell out the extra cash for uh, this card and for uh, this watch. So let's go ahead and take off some of this plastic and we can uh, swap out the lens to a macro lens and really see everything going on here because it's a lot. So I guess before I remove the watch from the box, we can talk about everything that came in the box. Uh, we can see kind of this Velcro blue strap goes very well with this whole colorway here. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. We have a spring bar tool and then um, I do want to see what's on the other side of this uh, card because it is it is a metal card and uh, it's actually engraved so it's not just inked uh, there is actual texture on here very very cool and oh whole bunch of text okay let's get up close here alrighty so here it says Hawker Harrier XV741 blue nylon automatic limited edition to commemorate the 51st anniversary okay so I said 50th at the beginning of this episode but math is not my strong suit 51st anniversary of the first transatlantic crossing by aviators John Alcock and Arthur Brown the Daily Mail newspaper organized an air race in May 1969 the enclosed aviate Hawker Harrier XV741 blue nylon automatic watch celebrates the epic race that captured the world's attention and introduced the Harrier to the general public each watch watch is a unique limited edition timepiece that includes an original and authentic piece of Hawker Harrier XV741 piloted by squadron leader Tom Lucky Thompson, which won the race by flying from London to New York in 6 hours and 11 minutes 
as part of an RAF Royal Air Force operation codenamed Blue Nylon. So this is uh, absolutely a commemorative piece and it seems like uh, Aviate took a lot of time kind of putting a lot together, uh, making sure that, you know, I just noticed this from the box when I opened it, there's literally blue nylon for the strap. So it, it seems like they really did their homework here and uh, very cool. So again, is this like a ton of extra value? You gotta spend extra money for limited editions? No, but if you are an aviation fanatic, uh, this does so far seem like a pretty cool package, but let's take a look at the watch because that's what I think most of us care about. All right, so just simply by handling this watch, we can see it is beating. Let's go ahead and remove this plastic for you freaks out there. Uh, give it a thumbs up for removing the plastic on camera because I know you guys absolutely love that. In fact, let's see if there's more plastic on the case back. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yes, yes, oh. Okay, let's pull ourselves together and uh, continue the watch review, yeah? And guess what guys, you're actually in luck because I just realized there's even more plastic. This episode deserves multiple thumbs up, so hit that like button, guys. Okay, so as I sit here with this watch in my hands, I'm realizing there's like so much going on here. There's a ton of text and font all over these different moving parts that it's just, it's a whole lot to unpack. So let's get up close and really take a look and examine each little thing on this watch and then we can kind of talk about it as a package as a whole. All right guys, so full disclosure, I did remove this hang tag so you don't hear it like scratching up the desk because that's kind of annoying on camera. Um, it's just some technical support. Uh, you can register your watch on their website and then um, teaches you how to wind your automatic watch. Just move your wrist around. Okay, very cool. Um, Let's talk about this freaking watch, yeah? Okay guys, so I don't know about you, but the first thing I noticed about this Hawker Harrier is that it has like an enormous handset, right? The spindle looks ginormous. Uh, and then I thought, you know, as big as this handset is, there's no running seconds. Like I don't see any running, running seconds. Now I see the spring is moving. This is a skeleton watch, so I can see that this is in fact an automatic mechanical movement. Things are moving inside, but where are the running seconds? And then I realized, oh my gosh, this does have a running second display, but in a way that I've never really seen it. So let's move the handset around and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so to take a look at the running seconds, I do wanna move the handset around so that it's not obscured. I want you to be able to see all of what I'm talking about. So let's first take a look at this crown. Okay, it is a push-pull crown. And it feels like there's only one crown setting. So let's move the handset. And we can see something else moving as well. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. But hold on, let's focus in right here. All right guys, and there you have it. This is what I thought I was seeing and not quite understanding. This is the running second subdial in a way, right? It's, it's displayed in a way that I've never seen before, but it is kind of like small seconds. And the really interesting part is what it says bordering the subdial. It says 11.29 miles. And here's where I had to kind of go to my notes. So this is actually celebrating the speed flown during this transatlantic air race. So 0.89 Mach is equivalent to 677.5 miles per hour. And that equates to 11.29 miles every 60 seconds. So that's a very, very cool way of kind of celebrating this air race even more. And so yeah, every time this makes a full cycle, you have moved 11.29 miles, assuming that you're going 0.89 Mach or 677.5 miles per hour. That is ridiculous. But you know what? There's something else I noticed when I was moving that handset around. Uh, pay attention to this dial over here. I don't really need to tell you what it is because, well, it says it around that dial. It says 24 hours and this is in fact 
a 24-hour dial. Very, very interesting. And again, uh, this is in no way a boring watch. So if you're a minimalist, if you uh, want something that is modern, but very, very bare bones, minimal, clean, uh, this is probably not the watch for you. Gonna go ahead and say that right now. So, okay guys, as we take a look at this watch's design, uh, because again, I said that this is in no way minimalist, it is very modern, right? We can, we can all agree about that. So even if this watch is not my personal cup of tea, there is something that I want to just objectively say. Okay, because my taste is subjective, right? Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and speak for everyone in the world. There's one thing on this watch that I think no watch should ever have, and I think that th this, this is an objective truth. Right here, beneath where it says XV741, it says limited edition, that doesn't need to be there. Okay, that is just blatant marketing. I don't need it there. No watch ever needs to say that it's a limited edition. Doesn't make the watch any cooler. Doesn't make the watch any more valuable in my opinion. It's dumb. AV8, please remove that. So speaking of limited editions, I did want to flip this case back over and show it to you because uh, it says it on the case back as well. Uh, we can see limited edition. This is number 502 out of 741. Hawker Harrier XV741. All stainless steel. Japan automatic movement. So I want to talk about that because here uh, we can see something interesting. So this is like a turbine, right? The rotor is kind of like an integrated turbine. And I believe the Harriers actually used a Rolls-Royce Pegasus engine. Uh, so that's very, very cool. And then one thing is that on the, the blades of the turbine, uh, we can see 21,600 VPH, talking about the beat frequency of this movement. And then we can see 21 joules. So when we put that together along with Japan automatic movement, this watch is actually based on a Miyota 8 series automatic and it's modified a little bit because of, you know, this decorated rotor. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, these little subtle or not so subtle nods to aviation, uh, very, very fun. This rotor, I think, Although it is very stylized, it's very tastefully done. So even if you're not a huge fan of all the very out there design uh, on the dial, we can all agree this cool integrated turbine rotor, very, very fun. Now this watch does utilize a signed crown here and we can see some coordinates uh, kind of on either side of that crown. I believe it's probably going to be London to New York, although I did not plug those coordinates in. Uh, Overall, a very, very interesting celebration to a very uh, important race when it comes to aviation as a whole. Uh, man, whole lot to look at on this watch, but uh, we're not done yet. Let's take a look at some other parts about this piece. That's right, it's time to talk about straps. So inside this box was included a kind of Velcro aviator strap. We've seen these on some uh, NASA Speedmasters, these Velcro type straps. Uh, this one has a embossed or is it debossed? Uh, a few of you guys will correct me in the comments, but a stamped uh, bit of text here. And it says Operation Blue Nylon has the date. Uh, let's see, it's kind of difficult to read here, guys. It says Squadron Leader Tom Lucky Thompson Harrier, sorry, I'm like moving it away from the camera because I'm also trying to read it. Uh, has the time, London, New York, very, very cool. Uh, so this is kind of just a, another celebration piece. Um, but the strap that I think is more interesting, believe it or not, is this one. Uh, there's no text on it whatsoever, and it kind of reminds me of a kind of sailcloth type strap, but why I think this is really cool is because it's actually not sailcloth or cordura or nylon really that much at all. It's, it's mostly leather, believe it or not. So there's a nylon panel kind of wrapped around, but the whole body of the strap is actually this pretty thick gauge leather. So this does feel like a true, very sturdy strap, but it's not super duper uh, stiff. So that's 
pretty impressive. Still feels pretty supple and comfortable, although we won't know that until we put it on the wrist. So let's go ahead and measure this watch and then we'll see how it fits on my wrist. And I'm noticing something else at, in this angle. We can see there's some uh, kind of serrations here also mimicking a plane's turbine. So that's very, very cool. Yeah, let's measure this. Alrighty, it would not be a time teller unboxing and review without the digital calipers. So let's go ahead and check out the diameter of the watch. Now we can see this case does not use any like integrated crown guards or anything. So excluding the crown, let's go ahead and measure it at its widest point, about 44.1 millimeters across. Lug to lug will be a better indicator about how the watch wears on your wrist as far as how much room it takes up on your wrist. 52.5 millimeter lug to lug. You can see the case thickness here, 13.8 millimeters thick. And then uh, for kicks, let's go ahead and measure the strap or the lug width. A, let me see, 22 point millimeter lug width. So if you didn't like any of the straps that were included with this watch, you could go ahead and find any 22 millimeter strap and you'll be in business. Okay, let's put it on the wrist. All right guys, so here it is, the AV8 uh, Hawker Harrier Operation Blue Nylon Automatic Pilot's Watch on my seven and a half inch wrist for reference. Now, that, that lug to lug, I'm gonna be honest, it's well over 50 millimeters. I think it was just over 52 millimeters. Uh, so this is like almost, it's pretty much encompassing the entirety of my wrist, guys. Uh, I get it, this is, I guess, a hyper-modern take on a pilot's watch, I guess. Uh, so you do want that utter, you know, visibility in any situation. Um, but it's just, I'm gonna be honest, if you have big, if you have bigger wrists than me, and again, seven and a half inches, uh, then you could probably pull this off no problem whatsoever. If you have a wrist smaller than seven and a half inches, this is going to wear very large. Now, doesn't feel cumbersome on the wrist. I just personally don't like the look of having the watch's lugs like hanging over my wrist. I just don't like that look. So that's something to take into consideration, the size of your wrist and uh, the size of the watch's lugs. Um, but there's one thing that we have not spoken about this entire time, and that would be the actual spec sheet. So we've taken a look at the design, uh, some of the interesting features of this watch, but let's actually talk about what this watch is made of and, and you know, all the specs, let's do it. Okie dokie guys, this is a pretty shot, huh? The watch does play with the light very, very nicely, especially with all the different textures and cutouts. Um, again, a very interesting contrast with that kind of, I don't know what we would call that, teal, aquamarine, but whatever that color is against the kind of gunmetal of the uh, inner skeletonized material, just very, very interesting. So stainless steel case, we are getting a sapphire crystal with some anti-reflective coating. It does have a 50 meter water resistance rating. Now you are getting Swiss loom. I really want to see how that's going to work out. Again, very hit or miss when it comes to Microbrand Monday. Uh, hours, minutes, small seconds, I suppose we could consider it, and a 24 hour dial. Uh, this is the caliber 8S27 Miyota. Uh, it is modified with that rotor, and it is a 21 joule automatic. Very, very interesting. Now, we're gonna test the loom, and then I'm gonna tell you what I think when we compare it to the price. All right, guys, moment of truth for this bad boy. We gotta test the loom. Now, they said on the spec sheet, it's, it's utilizing Swiss loom. Oh, it's a Swiss loom. Let's see if it's any better than I don't know, non-Swiss loom. Uh, let's go ahead, shine that baby up for a little bit. Boom! Ooh! That does look quite nice, actually. So I don't know how well it's getting picked up on camera. It's not the most vibrant contrast in the world, but I do like the difference in loom colors. So we can see the indexes and the zero index is kind of a darker hue of blue, and then uh, the handset 
is utilizing more of, I, again, I'm really bad with colors. It's, it's a lighter blue. I want to say like teal, maybe not quite turquoise. I don't know. Someone tell me in the comment section. But I do like the dual uh, contrast loom. Very, very fun. I will say the handset is much more vibrant than the markers. So, yeah, not terrible, not the worst. Also, not the best. Okay, so we've spent an afternoon taking a look at this AV8 Hawker Harrier, codename Blue Nylon. What do I think? Well, first things first, not my cup of tea from a design standpoint, and that's purely my own opinion, okay? I think that it's not something I would initially look at and immediately want to throw on my wrist because it's just a bit out there. It's very, very modern and a whole bunch going on. It's very busy. But I know for a fact, I am positive that there are viewers watching this episode right now thinking it's the most gorgeous thing in the world and that's perfect. That's awesome. Different opinions make the world go round. We can't all like the same things. And you know, th this is just simply my opinion that I'm not a huge fan of the overall aesthetic. Now, when it comes to the spec sheet, uh, perfectly fine specs, right? It doesn't have a threaded crown and a 300 meter water resistance rating, but that's not the type of watch that this is. This isn't a dive watch. This is, I guess, a pilot's watch. It's at least a celebration of piloting, of aviation. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't really consider this a tool watch of any sort. Um, as far as the finishing goes, great finishing. I don't see any real tool marks. Everything was pulled off perfectly fine. Doesn't seem like a dirty case. There were no uh, specks or weird debris that I could see perhaps on playback. You guys are noticing some things. Absolutely leave that in the comment section. But as far as the finishing goes, perfectly fine. Everything feels solid. Everything so far is working as it should. Um, I do enjoy, you know, the Sapphire Crystal. Uh, I enjoy that it has at least a 50 meter water resistance rating, uh, has a decent movement, uh, all the little subtle modifications and nods uh, when it comes to this specific air race and the Harrier jet. Um, I really enjoy that, you know, that modified uh, designed uh, turbine rotor, very, very cool. Um, I actually really do enjoy uh, that second sub dial and how it says 11 point, uh, what was it? 11.28 miles or 29 miles, 11.29, there you go. I really like that. I think it's really cool to imagine that every cycle, every rotation of that second hand, uh, when it hits 60 seconds, you've moved that distance moving 0.89 Mach. That is ridiculous to think about. Um, so it is a very fun kind of trophy celebrating uh, that era in aviation. But let's take a look at the price because again, we have to kind of stack all of this up against the price. $495. Now there are a whole lot of watches that you can get within that price range. Some of which have more functionality, more usability than this watch. But the truth is, this watch isn't really made to be a tool to use in any real situation. This is kind of just a fun celebration piece. Now you already know my opinion. I wouldn't want to just immediately throw this on the wrist because, oh my God, it's the coolest looking watch in the world. That's, it's just not my cup of tea. But if you're really truly in to that uh, code name Operation Blue Nylon, if you're really into Harrier Jets, if you're really in to this look, because like, I know there's someone watching this right now that thinks this is the most gorgeous piece in the world, then 495 is reasonable for a limited edition watch because again they could have gone crazy and been like oh two grand yeah it's limited edition blah, blah 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 again the whole limited edition marketing you know how i feel about that i don't need to beat that drum anymore but i would love to hear how you feel about this watch again harrier jets i always thought they were so cool how they could kind of hover in air uh, my dad taught me about that when i was little i thought it was the coolest thing ever Growing up, my favorite plane was uh, the Flying Fortress, obviously, um, and then, uh, believe it or not, the A-10 Warthog. Boy, are those badass. The tank busters, those are just badass planes. Um, but 
I would love to hear what you think about this watch. So guys, leave me that comment. Special thanks to Aviate for sponsoring this episode and sending me this watch to review. We can't do Microbrand Monday without these watchmakers helping us, so really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, guys, I wanna thank my channel members for supporting me every month, allowing me to film literally every day. Uh, it's just, man, a blessing, you guys. And my regular viewers and my new viewers. We're past 152,000 subscribers. Give yourself a round of applause. This one's for you. Hope you enjoy uh, these Microbrand Monday episodes. I have a blast filming these, learning about all these watches that I would otherwise have never heard of. So yeah, really, really digging these series. Um, go ahead, check out the affiliate links in the description below. A bunch of really cool watch-related gear there. Um, kind of a one-stop shop for the watch collector. Uh, you do help the channel out a bunch when you shop using those affiliate links. Uh, you can check out my personal website, www.thetimetellershop.com. And uh, yeah, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.